Here's what it's like to live on the prairies. Hopefully you can hear the wind in the background. Yesterday I was out in a t-shirt working in the yard, 18 degrees Celsius. Today, five below, about a 30, 40 click wind and a little bit of snow. What can you say? Spring, that was a nice day. I put the small trim wind lace that goes around the windshield in place. Pretty happy with that. A little wrinkle there to get rid of. But it looks pretty good. So that's one down. To this point I have made the rear shelf, which is not in yet obviously. I have to put this small wind lace trim pieces around the window and I'll do the same thing I did to the windshield. You can see it there sitting up on top of the frame. Same thing at the back. I did have to cut this down though. Um, for some reason it was about a quarter of an inch too wide. And this stuck out so I'm not sure how that happened but that's part of being a neophyte. So now I'm just stapling it in place and then I'll put the trim on after I put in the rear shelf. The next thing is to determine where I want the uh, wind lace to end. And I think what I'm going to do is because this swoops up here, I'm going to have it follow up here and get tucked underneath the window trim. I think that's probably going to look the best. I don't have the orig full length original of that, so I'm guessing, but I think that's probably going to be best rather than trying to run it across with the rear shelf. So I'm starting to put it in, got it most of the way around, got some more straightening to do. So I've rated this tweezers for my wife's makeup bag. <laughs> she doesn't know that yet. And I'll try and pull these pieces out that are stuck in here and then try and straighten out the rest of it. And I'm hoping this straightens with some shrinking. Tweezers is definitely the way to go very good for getting in there and smoothing things out. I did have to pry this part forward a fair amount to get this out. It was all tucked in inside because there's a retaining bracket there that hooks up into the frame and it was grabbing the wind lace or the trim piece. So this is all nice and smooth through here. Ignore the headliner for now. I'm going to shrink that. That is all getting straight. So this part I haven't done yet. Show you what the tweezers is capable of. I'll be pulling all those pieces out now. My apologies for some of the lighting. I can't turn on the shop lights because they shine through the window and it ends up with a lot of glare. So you can see this piece is sitting through here. Okay, that I'm going to have to loosen first before I can pull it out. I'm trying to grab the rope that was tight up in there. Do some loosening here. Be careful not to wreck the fabric with the tweezers because it is pull on it repeatedly and it does fray. So I'm going to pull that with my fingers so I can pull that with the tweezers, make it even. See if I can change the lighting a bit here. Looks like it's better for the camera. Not better for me though. There we go. That's pulling out. Get that nice and even. Cut those off later with a razor blade, I think. Again, the hook underneath is holding that in, so I'm going to have to pry that free. But I think I will anchor this first so it doesn't pull. The awl is very handy for this. Finding a screw hole. 
The trick is to put it in at exactly the same angle. Getting close to being perfect enough. I think that might be it. Let's have a look. My apologies, just tipped the camera and the way it slid. I think it's trimmed. Headliner is the next challenge, getting the sags out. There you have it. Trimmed up. There's the glare from the outside light. Just look at the wind lace so far. <laughs> Ignore the headliner. There's the rear shelf. And the seat, of course, forms the front edge. And here's the old grill. Probably not the classiest piece, but it was in the car when I bought it. Hey, trim problems continue. I've made these uh, secondary wind laces here. It's using 3 8 foam strip. Out of the same material that the windshield and the back window are trimmed with. And then I have to cover these staples. They're all in here. Originally, uh, when I stripped out the interior, there was a second half-inch wind lace here. Uh, I can't find any pictures of original cars that show that, but I, uh, this was the way the headliner was attached previously, except with tacks instead of staples, and those had to be hidden, so it makes sense that it came with a second wind lace to act as a trim piece. However, how to get it to sit in there properly and fall down and cover all the staples and look like it's a factory job. I'm still working on that, but uh, these pieces, this material may be a little too thick, I don't know, but I don't really want to go any thinner. So such are the problems of somebody who didn't document things enough. I took this out about five years ago, and of course I can't remember. I think it was the way I'm trying to attach it, but I'm not 100% sure. Ah, uh, the adventures. I was trying to find some way to get a permanent crease in this if I could, to, or some way to get it to flop over better. So what I've done is I've, first I've sewn it along the actual edge of the material, of the cord inside, the foam uh, rod. Then I sewed another one to stop it fraying. That was my wife's suggestion. And then another one on the outside to stop it fraying. So both of those are zigzags. One's mild, one's extreme. And although a straight seam would work too, I'm sure. Then I found that this is synthetic material. So if the iron is hot enough, and if you don't watch what you're doing and get it too hot, you can put a permanent crease in this. So I rolled it with the iron, like this, and tried to get it to bend over. I might have to uh, do a little bit more, 
but it has got a curve to it now, so I'll see how it fits up above. So the driver's side, I was a little too cautious with the with ironing the seam. I didn't get enough of a kink in it. So the second one, a little more aggressive, and I used the iron on the wool setting, and I passed the iron along it and got more of a crease. Being synthetic material, uh, it, you can uh, press it into position and almost melt it. So being cautious, but more aggressive than I was before. So I think this should work better. It's got more of a curve to it. That should hang better up here. If not, I will pass some thread just a string of thread through the two pieces just to hold them together and pull it down so you don't see a gap when uh, sitting in the seat. So that should work. One thing about having my arms up and doing this work tells me it's time for a shower. When I made these trim pieces, they go on the B pillar. I used cardboard as the backing and it's not strong enough for the screws for how it mounts there. So I'm going to reinforce it with some metal. Unfortunately I didn't do that before, but so I'm going to put those pieces on and I'm going to put the staples through these holes, hammer them back like I did before. I still have to cut this one out like to look like this one. And that will slot down onto the screws. So it's nice and tight and it will hold this from breaking the cardboard because it won't be relying on the cardboard anymore. And then the top will still be held in by the switch that clamps against this portion. And there's the finished product. Staples are in, bent over on the other side. And then the slots. And that should hold it. Now to try steaming. See if I can shrink some of those wrinkles out. So I bought this hand steamer. It was about 45 bucks, I think, at um, Canadian Tire. Uh, supposedly, it's ready now with the green light on. Steam so far. Oh, there we go. And that's low heat. So let's see what happens. Here's some wrinkles right in here and here. I'll try those first. Much improved so far. See very little, very small wrinkles there. This one is pr pretty much gone. Some of the others that were along the other side are gone. Uh, still to do up top. It has definitely improved. Uh, there's still some worrying parts here like this. I've just steamed that 
I'm going to let that sit for a bit, see if it shrinks at all. I might have to take the window frame out and retention it, which I'm not looking forward to. And then this side still has a bit more to go, but it's all getting better. My standards are such that I'm going to call this a success. There's a couple little wrinkles here and there, but I think it's quite acceptable. One there I can steam a bit more yet. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. There's one there I don't really like, but that means taking the window trim out. And I had quite a fight getting that wind lace to clear the window frame. So I think I'm going to leave that, steam it a bit more, see if it reacts and shrinks. And I got a bit more to do here as far as the stretching it down. Some of what was required was stretching as well as shrinking. And I think it's okay. Show you the front. I don't think it's anything to worry about. Thanks for watching. I want to thank you for watching through to the end. I hope you have enjoyed the, this video and any of the other ones that you have seen. And I have a favor to ask. The way YouTube works and other uh, social media, if I don't have likes and dingy bells, then uh, I get ignored. So it's getting harder and harder to find my channel when I do searches to check on how it's going. So if you could subscribe or hit the little dinghy bell, that would be wonderful. That would help me a lot. If you think there, you have some friends who might enjoy this series, I ask you to let them know. Uh, the more that uh, YouTube and Rumble, etc. see favorites and people who are watching, the more they recommend it. It's getting so that when I even search my channel with the exact name, I end up down the list and they're putting other sites before this one. So if you could help out in that way, I would sincerely appreciate it. Uh, to this point, in the six months or so that I've been doing these videos, I've received one comment, uh, which tells me that uh, not many people are watching. Uh, the most popular video I've had is about 250 people. So I'm not complaining, and I do hope uh, this is helpful. Uh, I would like to see more people watching. It would help to encourage me in these efforts and uh, the one comment I did have, though, was positive. So, in that regard, I'm running a 100% positivity rate. Thank you.